Our dispatch received a call of an active shooter at the Natalie Medical Building at uh, 6457 South Yale Avenue. Um, we had officers um, go arrive at the location uh, at 456, so a three minute uh, response time, and made contact with victims and the suspect at 501. Uh, and that was them making their way to the second floor. The officers that did arrive uh, were hearing shots in the building, and that's what directed them to the second floor. Um, right now, we have uh, four civilians that are uh, dead. We have one shooter that is dead. And uh, right now, we believe that is self-inflicted. Officers have not been interviewed, but we're certain that's a self-inflicted gunshot wound on his uh, part. The suspect, we do not have an identity that uh, we believe we're getting close uh, on the identity of, of uh, the suspect. Uh, he is a black male, uh, estimated to be 35 uh, to 40 years old. Uh, and we have confirmed he had one long gun, a rifle, and one handgun uh, on the scene at the time. So there's Tulsa police uh, describing a, a scene of yet another mass shooting in America, this time in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, at a hospital this time as well. And as they described their 35 to 40 year old black man was uh, the suspect who also apparently had a self inflicted gunshot wound to end the entire thing. So a few more details here, but by the way, they did name him finally. That was as of yesterday afternoon when they were announcing that his name is Michael, his name was uh, Michael Lewis. And there's also other details when it comes to that, but I'm gonna get to him in a second. Uh, so police received this call from a man walking with a rifle near a medical office shortly before 5 p.m. local time. Then when police responded, they said it turned into an active shooter situation. That's according to the police, Captain Richard Mullenberg. Uh, so when police entered the building, they found multiple people shot in one area on the second floor, including an orthopedic office. The victims could be a combination of both employees and visitors is what authorities initially said. The Natalie building is a medical building on the hospital's campus. Here's a quote, officers immediately rushed to the second floor where the shooting was taking place. When they got there, they found a few people had been shot. A couple were dead at the time. It's what Millenberg told ABC News. We also found out at the time who we believed and still believe to be the shooter because he had a long rifle and a pistol with him. A little bit of details on that long rifle and pistol, David, that I just saw. According to CNN reported this, this assault style weapon. This is not a graph, you guys. I'm just this is straight off of the, uh, the the story here. Uh, found at the scene of Wednesday's deadly shooting in an Oklahoma medical building had been bought that day. So the the assault style rifle was bought that same day. And that's according to three federal re, uh, sources mm -hmm. that was briefed on this whole thing. Um, also, the assault style weapon was an AR-15 style firearm, and a different weapon, which was the handgun, was purchased on May 29th, just two days before. That's what the source told CNN. So his two weapons, David, were the handgun and then the assault style weapon, which both were fired and both were bought very recently, right before he went on the spree. What are your thoughts on what happened? So thoughts are that um, obviously we know there was no background check. There was no attempt to determine whether this guy had any sort of mental health issues. Because if you're able to buy a weapon the same day, that's what happens. And sometimes it may be a cursory background check. You fill out a form and they check to see if there are any outstanding warrants. But it doesn't even sound like that was the case uh, here. The other thing is an AR-15, there are something like 12 million AR-15s. Uh, it's the most popular uh, weapon, rifle in America. It can be adjusted to have bump stocks where you can fire 50 to 100 rounds at a time. And it is also, um, it is incredibly fearful for the first responders because they say that it was an AR-15 that was used at the Robb Elementary School. It was an AR-15 that was used at the church in Texas. It was an AR-15 that was used in Pittsburgh. It was an AR-15 that was used in Sandy Hook. And in each of these cases, you have first responders who say the people who are dead are unrecognizable. That's how much damage because of the power of an AR-15 compared to other rifles. An assault weapon, it fires it faster. The bullet, once it hits something, starts to tumble. So it literally explodes inside the body. And what's left is a gruesome, bloody mess that leaves people unrecognizable. That is what an AR-15 does. And so if people think, oh, well, we should, you know, AR-15, it's not that. No, AR-15 is the most lethal, causes the most damage of any possible weapon. It is used over and over and over in these mass shootings. We call these uh, these suspects and these shooters and these murderers cowards because they wouldn't want to face anyone. But we keep allowing folks to go out with these, you know, we go from mental health issues to uh, how cowardly they are and how they don't want to actually see a good guy with a gun. That's why they carry guns like this, because it's hard to see these good guys with guns 
when you're just spraying everyone and you're the aggressor. You're the one with the bigger weapon. You're the one that's got the body armor. So yes, that helps cover up their cowardice. But that's why we have to keep all these folks from getting to these things. I know when the, once the process could come through, maybe that's complicated. I mean, we're only a, a, you know what we call ourselves the greatest nation that the earth has ever seen, but we just can't do anything. It's really weird how we brag about ourselves, then we dog ourselves out by saying that we're sorry and can't do anything about anything. Oh, But we're awesome. Are we awesome or do we suck? Let's go to more details because this was quite worse. It could have been even worse based off of what they thought was going on. So police also said they're investigating a possible bomb threat. They may be connected to this, to this suspected shooter. Again, his name was Michael Lewis. Uh, authorities evacuated a home in Muskogee, Oklahoma, about 50 miles southeast of Tulsa, after receiving a tip that the suspect, quote, may have left a bomb at his residence. That's what the police chief uh, said on Wednesday night. Also, the mayor, Marlon Coleman, later said that the bomb squad cleared the location of a potential threat and that the scene had been turned over to the necessary authorities. So. Um, they cleared it, it was either there or not there, but it's apparently fine as of that evening. Um, I don't know the degree of that if someone just called that in, but it seems like the violence and the aggression just continued on. One more part, David, before your last thoughts on this is um, they did say they weren't sure if it was targeted yesterday. As of this morning, I did see another article that said um, it was deliberate and he was targeting. I'm not sure who, but he was targeting that for a reason. He wasn't just running into a random building. Well, and some of the reporting that I've seen is this was a medical facility that he went into that he was apparently looking for a doctor that he had some sort of beef with and that the people refused to say where the doctor was. So he started shooting them. The bottom line is that clearly if there had been a even a cursory look at who this guy was, if there was somebody who had time to spend a couple of weeks as they do in Canada, sometimes up to 28 days looking at somebody's background, getting <clears throat> a third party validator in order to buy a weapon. Somebody might have said, hey, this guy's really angry. He's going through a terrible time in his life. He's got issues with a doctor that he's really mad at. Those are red flags. Yeah. That can then stop somebody from actually having you know the opportunity to buy a weapon. Now, you know they could still get a weapon. They can go under their friends to buy them a weapon. There's all sorts of loopholes. but. In this society, if we're not even gonna ask the basic questions to find out who are these people, then we deserve these mass shootings in the United States. If that's how lazy we've become, we deserve it. Maybe if we um, maybe apply a few of the, uh, uh, the anti-choice rules that Republicans wanna put on women before uh, they go and receive care. Yeah. Maybe just a few of those that they're proposing apply to gun ownership and background checks and making them wait two weeks, all that stuff. Maybe, maybe, but no, this is less important.